what the heck is up? Welcome to a brand new episode of Track the Lake. I'm Andy Malfrey, and this is Pat George. You ready to talk about some metalcore? Yeah. Ready to talk about screamo music? Are you ready to talk about pop punk? <laughs> Let's open this pot up. Let's open this pot up. <sighs> What's up, Pat? How you doing, buddy? Good, man. How are you? Good, dude. Feeling jacked. Feeling obnoxious. Feeling ready. <laughs> Feeling ready to annoy the world. Feeling caffeinated. I'm Bro, I'm gonna no. It's not just the caffeinated. I've had a whole. I've had a whole other week. Every, here's my goal in life: is to every week I start the week with um essentially a um uh, a mental breakdown uh, or or just a just a crisis of being. And by the end of the week, I solve that problem, so I become a whole new person. It's a weekly routine, and mm-hmm. it's the it's the right level of chaos and order that gets me hyped. Like and it. I've I've hit this wall, and I think I've, I've I've hit this I've hit this new moment in my uh, being in myself, and I've realized I'm done being fake positive about stuff. There's oh. a lot of there's a lot of and part of my words BS in this world. Whoa, take it easy. There's a lot of horse dung. Hey, hey, you're trying to get us demonetized. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Whoa. I get that there's rules. I get that there's rules, but I'm not going to play by them because I'm just don't sick give of it. Oh, now you got um, me doing it. I'm sick of this spit, dude. Oh, buddy, 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 buddy. That's the hard ones. OK, now you can't take that back. OK, this you know what? Ha- you know what? Well, here's the thing, Pat. I don't give a hoot. Oh, God. All right. Well, what's what's the worst thing? What's the worst case scenario for you? What's what? What's about this whole culture that's really got you uh, PO'd? No, if if I if I want to be if I want to be for real for real and not play play, um, I re- no I realized what was like getting me frustrated about like life and you see it on social media and all the time. I'm really getting tired of fake positivity, and yeah. it's and and I'm not to say I don't want I don't like positivity. I'm saying there's so much. There's so much like there's so much like fake it till you make it energy or just like smile till you trick your brain into thinking you're happy. It's like there's a lot of stuff out there that that uh, and once again, pardon my language, freaking stinks. Wow. These are some (laughs) hot takes right off the bat. There's a lot of crap out there that freaking stinks. And (laughs) but we don't have to we don't have to act like it rules, you know, until until it feels right. Right. You know what I mean? I feel it's like I feel like I feel like. Like like this day and age, I feel like the world's crumbling and everyone thinks if they just smile hard enough, all the crumbling buildings will repair themselves or some shit like that. And I'm not being I'm not being literal on that because I don't think buildings are crumbling <laughs> yet. Uh but <laughs> unless you live in Turkey, sorry. Uh um, oh yeah, they're getting goofed on real hard, aren't they? Too soon, I know. But I it's a uh I think there's a <laughs> I think there's an element of like people finding a lane that they think that they can dominate because not a lot, you know what I mean? Like, so I think there's a lot of that fake that's super like people aren't as good as actors as people want to make themselves out to be. So like, that's why a lot of reality TV shows and uh, most of this fake drama shit really stinks, in my opinion, if I'm if I'm being uh, completely honest, mm-hmm. I, think it's, I think it's a bunch of uh, malarkey. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's it's because they're shitty actors like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like they're like they 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 they're like, hey act uh uh angry at this at this part when he comes in and he says that act angry and they go okay oh yeah you know what i mean like and it's like you watch the reality like, shows no but dom does like dom i hate her. i hate her so much when i when she's watching those shows <laughs> like, she is exactly what i hate in life because like she she not only watches those shows but she just like has them on and and i get it if you're like watching them and you're like oh i'm gonna follow the drama and like watch the show but she'll have a show on and just like and just be absorbing it, like just absorbing the bullshit arguments, but not actually getting entertained by it. Like I've said this, I've said this before, but this is like my favorite thing because my wife's obsessed with like Real Housewives. We've talked about it a bunch on panties and shit. So the boys already know. But my wife's obsessed with Housewives and my favorite thing ever. She doesn't do it as much anymore. Um, cause I think she's sort of understood the grift that they're doing the, the fucking psyop that is those fat titted whores <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, but she, she'll, she used to do this all the time and she goes, can you believe these dumb bitches did dumb bitch shit? And I would yeah. go, yes. Yeah. 
yeah. Yes, I believe that those fucking idiots. Is it Thursday um, night at seven uh, seven p.m. Eastern? Yeah. Then I believe it. <laughs> yeah, I believe that That's the when fucking it was idiots. <laughs> I believe that the fucking idiots did fucking idiot shit. Yeah. But no, I'm I'm in like a broader sense of the thing. I realized that was what was um having a lot of like having a lot of frustration is like you know just looking at the and me i think music to relate it to sort of drag the lake so we don't go off on like a fucking uh nah, tangent on we're doing fine uh, we're doing it so we don't go on a tangent pontificating on other shit i think you see it i think you see it in music a lot of times it's why i like hardcore music so much is they kind of go at it I think I was telling you about this with like, or I was telling someone about this with like my mindset in the gym where I'm like, I can be a very angry guy, but it's not a productive way to be day to day. It'll get you, it'll get your shit fucked up. I think it's like, I think it's very similar to the theme of the famous Chappelle Chappelle show sketch where he's like, when keeping it real goes wrong. I think that's like a, a, a correlates a lot to like people with anger problems where you feel like justified in that moment. But in the long term, you really wish you wouldn't have done it because it's going to yeah. fuck your shit up. Yeah. Yeah. That. That's like the thing I'm always worried about. So I, I've, I've like realigned my life to a lot certain times where I'm like, this is where you're allowed to be a psycho. That's why it's good. Like you do jujitsu. I do like uh, weightlifting and all that stuff. It's like, it's like, you know, so you can function day to day. It's like a lot these times to allow yourself to be that psycho. You know what I mean? So you can kind of, it's almost like a cheat day. It's like an emotional cheat day where you're like, don't worry on Saturday night. We'll have cake, but the cake is really like just being fucking way too angry while you're throwing up weights. Um, when you want to, when you're in public and I, and I, or I, if I'm in public and I, I get that feeling of like, I'd really love to just run up and tackle and strangle the fuck out of that person. I go, just wait till tomorrow morning, sweetheart. <laughs> You'll you get, get to do you it. Can do that like five or six times in a row. And like, but yeah, it's by the end of it, you're going to be like, whew. I cannot take one more tackling and strangling. Oh, I'm beat. You know what I mean? Like emotionally, it's not, it's, it's meditative, like mentally, but also physically to get that, that aggression out in a, in a safe environment. And yeah, it, because it's not aggression at that point, because it's not aggression really in the moment. It's really about other shit that's fucked up in your day. When you get to those points where you're like, what the fuck you get to those points where you can get to be a psycho yeah it, it's it's that reserved energy you learn how to reserve that energy for psycho time so yeah when you're in the gym or you're in any gym you're in the jujitsu gym you're in the weightlifting gym you're in the judo gym i guess you can go i'm gonna go psycho <laughs> you know what I mean? wait is that is that uh <laughs> are, hey, the, are, are the judo there. people you guys shit on i don't know the who, who are your guys's enemies like you you do weightlifting you, you do cross sumo sumo lifters they're the ones that i get um uh, like the sumo lifters. I was showing you about that. For anyone who doesn't know, like in like when you do deadlift, you can stand normal with your like feet shoulder length apart. And a lot of times, truth be told, a lot of times they do sumo when they're going like super high up, when they're going like above six, seven, eight hundred pounds, mm -hmm. or they're or they're you're trying to hit something that's like crazy out of your uh weight range. Here's my thing though. I got no problem with sumo if you're working on getting to like doing it excuse me, normal, but yeah. there's something to me because on my Instagram, I'm deep into like fucking uh, working out, tick, working out reels and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. I get a lot of fitness stuff. And the one that gets me is when they do, because when you watch someone do sumo lift, like I'll give people, I'll give people a pass on sumo because it's like people will be like, oh, sumo's cheating. But at the same time, it's like you still picked up 800 pounds off the ground. Like that's yeah, yeah. crazy. Yeah. But the, it's when people, like I saw this one kid who was like real scrawny and his, uh, his deadlift was like not that crazy. And then he was doing like the widest sumo lift, pulled it up a little bit. And there's this thing that they do all the time. So they got the weight belt. The mm -hmm. weight belt is to sort of like so you can keep your shit tight your when you when <laughs> what what isn't that basically to keep your guts inside your stomach? Well, it's it's so you can kind of it helps you brace yourself more and then also you know it keeps your shit tight so you don't like pull anything. I think, yeah. but here's the thing: they do a lot of times on like weightlifting weightlifting TikTok is when they hit a big one, they they flick their fucking weight belt off and kind of like whip it around and they just have this like I fucking just did that <laughs> and it's like. When you're on TikTok, it's like, fine, do that. But if yeah. you're fucking pulling sumo and the weight's not that much and you put your cool guy fucking music uh, underneath your shit and you got some Jordan Peterson audio of him being like, it's good to be a beast, but you got to keep it controlled <laughs> and da-da-da. When you're doing all that, 
Don't fucking do that and then post sumo. You look like yeah. a dickhead, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree with that. I I can see that, and I think uh, going off of like what the um what psycho time kind of is like, I think that and relating it back to music for yeah, at least for me as a youth when I was a, a youngin, I used to love going into the pit, going to shows. That was kind of your release. You go there, and that was kind of psycho time, like the, all those things where like. Maybe, you know, because you're young and you don't know who to believe. You don't know who's telling that. You don't know if like your parents going like, oh, you should do this, this and this. And that'll be a good life. And you're like, I don't want fucking want your life, dad. And then you're like, (laughs) then society's like, oh, this, this, this. And then the the bands are telling you, uh, hey, don't trust society or don't trust the this or that or banks. Don't trust mom and dad. They won't let you have just a Pepsi. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, yeah, <laughs> depending on what song, what especially what uh, generation you grew up in. I gotta say, can I pause you real quick? Go for it. Um, um, institutionalized by suicidal tendencies. Some of that was you, dude. You were yeah. being a oh, little yeah. bit. You were being a little bit unrealistic. Sugar's and also, really bad for you. Like, also, if you want a Pepsi, uh, have some water. No, but also too, you can't be bitching about how like mom and dad just don't understand you. They're bothering you. Oh, by the way. Go get me a soda. Yeah. I, I, I just I just I just wanted to throw that out. You know, there. You know what I think? I, I, I mean, I honestly uh, meant I if I may just piggyback off of your argument a bit. Please, I dude, think, hop up on there. I think the per- perspective of uh, wait, 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 wait. OK. All right, Pat, say it. Perspective. You're piggybacking on me. Uh, <laughs> That's what that was. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I I wasn't in. Sorry, a... I'm a fucking silly goose today. I'm it just up. is what it is. Uh, but hey, you're goose and I'm piggy. You know, let's go. Um, I think that institutionalized the song, the perspective of, in which it's written, I can't relate to because it sounds like classic only child syndrome. And you just mm. it out. is that kind of thing of like, fuck you, mom. Give me a fucking soda. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what? Like you got soda in the house? My mom, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, fuck you, dude. I don't have soda in the house. We weren't allowed. <laughs> Yo, that's like, hilarious. Fucking, you, you're not gonna fucking tell me what to do. Like, she pays the bills, dude. You gotta, you gotta listen a little bit. <laughs> so you this, you gotta respect this is a, your parents, bro. <laughs> this is a perfect. This is a perfect way to segue back to like my original point because it is like. Like, like you making that point of like, yo, we didn't even fucking have soda. That's why. So I was making the point where like, I'm sick of, I'm sick of acting like a lot of this shit around, like a lot of, a lot of shit in the world isn't shit. You know what I'm saying? That's what's getting me fucking frustrated. And, but at the same time, like you got to also make sure you're not like a fucking woe is me sad sack because you're saying with there, it's like, you're always bitching. Like I only wanted was a Pepsi mom. And you're like, yeah. yo, someone's got, there's always someone worse than you. There's always someone who's got it worse than you. So it's like, you're allowed to be fucking pissed. You're yeah. allowed to be fucking, you know, catch a case of the boohoo's from time to time. But it's like, keep, keep it all bro. in perspective. Like yeah. a lot of people got it worse than fucking. Some people don't got Pepsi to yell at their mom to get them. You know what that song would be? You know what that- <laughs> so good if it was in my house. I just wanted a fucking Sam's Choice Cola, Mom. <laughs> All I wanted was an RC Cola. I just, just wanted one. a Dr. Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> All I wanted was a mountain, mountain lightning. Just one mountain lightning. <laughs> just one mountain lightning, Mom. <laughs> Damn. What other podcast are you going to get these tight locked White in trash insti- references right here institutionalized <laughs> suicidal tendencies <laughs> references dude thank you for pointing that out because i that is like their only good song in my opinion like they have no they have that other one too they have another good song that should be a game show that should be a game show name only- four suicidal tendency songs <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'd never have a winner we could do it forever we could make it a million dollars yeah hey go you know what you know you know what? there'd be a go great peaking. drinking <laughs> there what no peeking. You're not allowed to look at the re- like. Don't look over. And there'd be a great drinking game. You know what would be the drinking game? Every time you watch the show, you had to take a shot every time they said you said institutionalized already. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was just gonna say that. How many times? How many doubles there are? Yeah, you can't say. Oh, you already said institute. I also too. I have um no because that psycho vision is good too. Isn't that them? Psycho vision. Oh yeah, psycho vision's like, a good song. Two songs like two kill. I mean, but one killer song. One fucking annoying as fuck song. That's a hit that everybody loves. And then 
the rest of it. And I saw, I just saw them recently, like a couple years ago at a uh, camp anarchy, I think 2019, 18, something like that. And, um, and yeah, like everybody got really excited for those songs. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else was kind of like, I mean, I was sitting on, I was sitting down. I'm not going to fucking like, look, I'll listen to those songs and I'll go like, Oh yeah, I remember Tony Hawk's pretty cool. I gotta be honest. I didn't get too deep into, uh, I didn't get too deep into suicidal tendencies. I remember when I was younger, um, I knew about them because like many bands, uh, I got introduced to them by like the Tony Hawk game mm. and which way what, what, people were beefing about something. I don't, I don't think. And by the way, I want to related to, that. sorry, people were beefing about something related to the Tony Hawk. I wish I remember it. Cause someone made, someone made a great fucking point about, it was like, like, do you remember the day and age where people were like musicians were getting really pissed about Guitar Hero? And you're like, you're like, first off, like, you know, I'm not even I'm not even trying to be funny, but there was actually one of the perfect examples was with my favorite. Gallows and um, but no, like Gallows, you know, because of Guitar Hero, Gallows got a really good bump for a minute. Maybe yeah. it was Rock Band. I forget which one it was, but they they're one of their big hits in the belly of a shark was yeah. on that was on that fucking I game. Guitar Hero, yeah. I think it happened with Every Time I Died too. They had the new black on there. There was a lot of bands that, like, no one really fucking knew about. And fucking, they got put on Guitar Hero. And you're just going, you you know, people are trying to, like, 100% the game as much as possible. And they get to, like, certain areas. And they're like, oh, shit, this song actually fucking rocks. Yeah. Um, and also, too, like, like as a music, we're both musicians. What, what, what's your, what's your, your main instrument was bass, right? Yeah. My main instrument was drums. I think we both. I I got pretty good at the drums. I'm a. I've never actually heard you play bass, but from what you told me, you got pretty proficient at the bass, right? I'm one of the best. World's best. Yeah, world's best. I'm right um, under Les Claypool. Exactly. Exactly. Les Clay. Who? Um. That's what I say. He's a, honestly he's a little too goofy. I take it a little bit more seriously. Fair enough. That's what I've always said about you. And um. But no, for real, it's like you didn't just fucking. It's like that's really hard to do it yeah. takes a lot of time and yeah, some yeah. people some people are kind of into the guitar but they're not aggressive you know you have all these people like i i forget who it was but it was people on like jack white level and it's just like hey jack and I'm, once again i'm not even trying I, I don't even know if it was him per se but it's like any guy like that it's like hey not everyone not everyone is aggressively obsessed with this to an autistic level. Some people just kind of like it. So they yeah. want a little bit of taste. So it's like, I don't know. Every, people people get really fucking absolute with this shit. So it's like you get these top tier level people be like, no, kids are going to be buying guitars. And then you got bands like Every Time I Die and Gallows who are just like, we're just happy anyone's listening. Thank yeah. you. I know the whole when musicians got mad at Guitar Hero back in the day, I thought that was the dumbest shit. I think I think it's uh, it's an interesting thing because like you can have yeah i think you're right like because not everybody is going wants to be a professional race car driver but they like to play nascar they like to yeah. get a little fake wheel and they like to get a little fucking cool chair that they can sit in and put a little helmet on. you know what i mean like people sometimes like to fucking like the uh, to role play pretend. you know what i mean yeah like every, every every once in a while that's what happens so if somebody wants to pretend like they're a fucking uh, rock star but they have stage fright or they don't have the drive like you said just to fucking learn the instrument. Who gives a fuck? It's fine. It's I, don't, like, I, don't, I don't get what the fuck's wrong with that. Yeah. And also, also too, like, if you, like, you know what also it does? It gets people out of the way who aren't really about it. So right. it gets people who, people who would originally kind of like be into music. Mm -hmm. Like, so maybe they'd have a band and go do all that shit. And then uh, like a couple months or a couple years down the line, they realize they're not like into it, into it like that. Yeah. You got those people don't even end up doing that. They just play guitar hero, get it out of their system. And then you got more room for the people who actually give a shit. I think the best thing, I think the best thing about it too was like, and it's not just for bands. Like every time I die, so it's bigger bands and everything. They, they got way more exposure from that because they either liked this song or they just liked the game. So like they, it was truly it, that, that game is very equal to my playlist. There's a lot of like, if, if it got a little bit crazier, that would be, you know, I think closest to my playlist because, or even a, a little softer, like more R and B and shit. Like, but why would you have guitar hero R and B? 
it would it, it's 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 exposing people so like every once in a while like a song that comes on like the super metal song that comes on that well, i don't know how dom would fucking know it you know she likes some some cool stuff and she's open to it but like when she knows songs that i'm like how the fuck do you know this song it's because of guitar hero and it's and it's 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 that kind of like so not only do like classic songs get stuck like so i'm like how do you know smoke on the water <laughs> you know I mean? like, and she's just like oh because i knew that learning an instrument so there is definitely a connection to it. Tom was yeah. motivated enough to learn an instrument. It's one of those things of like, oh, it's always been one of those things I wanted to do. Well, maybe it's not because you never did it. So <laughs> it's okay. You don't have yeah. to. That. It doesn't make you good, bad. It doesn't make you a failure or a success. It just makes you a human being. And if you like playing Guitar Hero, that's kind of the same way. You're an appreciator of music and you're somebody, I don't know, what were they pissed off just because people weren't learning new well, like, they're pissed off because, like, they're like, this is going to make kids not want to actually go play the guitar. And you're like, yeah, that's a dumb reason. It's a dumb reason. It's also, I don't know. It's like, who but, the fuck cares? But my whole my whole point you're is. You're never going to have, you're never going to have kids not into the fucking guitar. Because ever. think about this. Think about for people like you and I who play instruments. And, like, when you're playing that compared to playing the real song on an actual instrument. It's not for you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's weird. It's weird because it doesn't necessarily match the tempo or it doesn't do this or it, 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 there's some kind of how they have the game designed. It's 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 not how you would actually play it. So it's not for you. Yeah. As a musician. Pe- people a, a lot of times people a lot of times I see it a lot in uh I see it a lot in like my libertarian political nonsense where you see people online cuz like libertarians are all like aggressively theoretical and with a lot of this stuff, because a lot of the stuff they talk about, it hasn't been enacted in real life. It's more about like, I think this would be I think this would be better or preferable. But then they'll have they'll have like I remember for a while. I haven't seen it in a minute, but I remember for a while, a couple of years ago, they would be so hard on Rogan about stuff. And you're like, you guys know Rogan's just like a dude. Yeah. He doesn't like he doesn't have and and and. It's like you get this fucking dude who's fucking huge and he's saying shit, you know, it, it's not going to satisfy a libertarian perfectly, but for the everyman, it's pre- he's saying some pretty good shit. So yeah. it's like, understand the context. So to relate it back to the guitar hero, they're just being like, no, kids are going to play the actual guitar. And it's just like, understand the context. Like you were saying, it's not for people who really want to learn the guitar. And then you start expanding upon that and thinking in a broader context. And then you start to realize like, oh, this is going to make rock music more popular. Right. So lean into it and promote it. But people, oh, so this is what I was, this is sort of the, overarching thought is uh don't let don't let perfect be the enemy of good so don't let your focus on what would be perfect to you make you discount something that's pretty fucking good you know what i mean so bringing it back to like the libertarian thing where if you got someone big like rogan who's not who's just being like you know like say he's say he's talking about like being anti-war or whatever, but he's not doing it in the most exact perfect way. And it's like, well, the guy with the biggest platform in the fucking world is getting people to think in a more anti-war thing. So that's going to cause more good for the world than it will bad. So do everyone a favor and chill the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Worst case scenario, he's getting people to think differently. That's a good thing because you want. Yeah. So shut up. So yeah, I, I think, but like in, in, in bringing it even back to what we were talking about with like the suicidal tendencies, I'm sitting there in the crowd going like, "Pusha, these guys stink, blah blah blah." But I, I'm looking. You, down you're at, like sitting on the ground. Is everyone like, like trampling? It's like a hill. It's like, it was a it was a couple day oh. festival. It was like I a, just imagine you crisscross applesauce in the middle of the pit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not with my back to him. Mm-mm. Nope. I'm sitting on I'm sitting on my friend's shoulders, but backwards. So my dick's in his face. I'm like, nope, not looking at him. <laughs> I ain't that's watching. So, that's so funny. Just cocking face. But I, folded but arms. I, I'm uh, sitting there, uh. and I'm sitting there going, like, play the fucking song that I like. Play, but I like I there's a huge crowd down there. There's a lot of people that are excited. It's not, it's not for me. It's just not. I get I like you said, that's a great way to put it. Don't let the and don't let perfect be the enemy of what was it again? Sorry. Don't let perfect be the enemy of good. Of good. Like that's the thing. Like I, they're good enough. Like they have those two good songs. People are excited to see them. They they do belong here. 
Do you know what I mean? Like you're I'm wrong in that case. Like that's that's the thing is like not enough people uh, like will recognize when you like you're allowed to have a shitty opinion and or you're allowed to have uh, an unpopular opinion. Let's just say like, yeah, a better way to put it. And and sometimes you have to recognize when it is that. So in that case, I was the minority. I feel good that you you feel the same way. It makes me feel a little bit more uh, accepted in this world. But suicide Anything I can do, baby, not not I'm not going to rail against them like I was the misfits. But I would I would say that <laughs> absolutely uh, uh, the suicidal tendencies are. Meh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and I, I love one of their hits. I despise the other hit and and the and the rest of the catalog is is I don't is not great. <laughs> I, mm-hmm. I just that's just but that's my opinion and and by the crowd of people that were cheering and 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 mashing about I was I was in the minority. But you had a, <laughs> you had a little something to say about our show uh, last week, didn't you? Before I get into that, before what? I get into that, my mean, last bitch? thing about the suicide <laughs> what? Huh, nothing. <laughs> the last thing I get into the last thing about suicidal tendencies is I remember I only knew about them because of Tony Hawk mm-hmm. and I'm not even necessarily saying suicidal tendencies don't have other good songs. I haven't gotten that deep into their no, catalog. I'm saying that. I know you're saying that and I, I respect it and I appreciate you. I um, I know, I know you're saying that, <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is like, Gen- like to the general population of music enjoyers yeah. it's it's uh institutionalized and what was the other one psycho vision i go and then like most Love people it. know that one song. <laughs> and what i'm saying is beyond that it's like kind of like huh would it na- that's why i said name four of them you may be right. able to get Oh, so that was my intro to suicidal tendencies. And then Tony Hawk came out with Tony Hawk's American Wasteland. And was it American Wasteland? Yeah, because Underground was right before that. Then American Wasteland, they had that dope album where we've talked about it before, like thrice covered Seeing Red. Mm-hmm. Um, I know Astro Zombies. Uh, uh, yeah, Astro uh, My Chem covered Astro Zombies. Uh, Take It Back Sunday covered I Like Food, uh, Suburban Home, and I Like Food. Fallout Boy did uh, Gorilla Biscuits. Gorilla Biscuit, yeah. And then uh, Census Fail oh, yeah. did Institutionalized. Mm-hmm. And I remember seeing a thing where suicidal tendencies was getting up their own ass because like a fucking uh, the, that shitty emo band um, would uh, dare play our super sacred rock song about Pepsi. And I remember just being like, <laughs> I just remember being like, yeah, I like census fail a lot more than you guys. So then Watch that your, was, you're pushing your luck there, buddy. <laughs> that was the, that was the moment I put up a wall in front of fucking yeah. suicidal tendencies. I was just like, yeah, no, screw you guys, dude. I like census fail a lot more than you guys. I didn't even know about that. And I don't necessarily, I, I wouldn't even say I, I, out of the two, I would say I like census fail more, but I don't necessarily like either band in, in particular. Yeah. I don't yeah. have anything either to say positive or negative in, in general. Like I don't think of give, uh, give them any mind, but when they're, yeah. brought up, I go, yeah, watch it, buddy. Cause I know which one's more popular. <laughs> 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 and if you're sitting there going like, Oh, these fucking dickheads, like, Let's just look at the sales of the song. Like you guys, let's just say the popularity of the band in general. It, you can't argue. Like again, I think in that case the suicidal t- tendencies were in the minority of there because Well, I'll say for the I'll say for the sake of for the sake of fairness, popularity and album sales isn't always the like right barometer because then right. we'd be like, "Oh yeah, so Taylor Swift's the greatest musician ever," which oh, yeah. I, I don't even hate. That. Yeah. What? I thought that's what we were saying. Yeah, no, that's what I, that's the whole point of this show. Yeah, yeah. Ultimately, <laughs> that's what we're getting at. We're, we're Swifties, baby. Is yeah, that what they're called? Spoiler. I think so. I think the Swifties are Swiffers. I don't know. Um, wet the, but what? Wet jets. Wet jets. Oh. <laughs> yeah, dude. yes, that's Taylor Swift fans. The wet jets. We're a couple of wet jets over here. <laughs> We're a couple of wet jets, baby. Um, so yeah, I don't always I don't always hit people with the fucking like, oh, how many albums did you sell barometer? That's what they were doing. I remember when Lil Nas X came out um with that old country road, which I don't even hate on Lil Nas X. His Twitter is the funniest shit. 
and then some of his late some of his later songs for like for like pop music it's actually kind of catchy and fun yeah. now as a as a staunch christian i don't like how he made the devil hard that made me uncomfortable I don't, but I don't everything enjoy his gay agenda no but yeah the no, rest no, of it's no, really no, good no, no, no. <laughs> the rest of the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah no very fun but i remember like that old country old town road or whatever the fucking song was it was that song was not good and i yeah. remember people were there's this rapper dave east who was like calling it out to be like that song fucking sucks which i agree with him it does yeah. and a lot of people were being like oh how many he sold more records than you and you're like that doesn't you're right. mean anything yeah it, it, but it's it's also i guess the i'm thinking more of the popularity of like uh of who would be able to who who would people stand up for in this in this scenario? Oh, like, true, true, true. I mean, yeah, I, I think that's more that's the popularity I was speaking more to. But you're right. Record sales is not a, is not a good barometer for. No, because that's a that's an interesting argument, too, because it's like who would who would more people stick up for? Because you could probably find you could probably find like a legendary band. I'm trying to think what's one of those bands that like inspired a bunch of bands, but never got like super popular. Uh. Wouldn't I'm trying it, to think. I'm, it's hard to say now because because even those bands are now a little bit. Thursday's a really good example of that. I was re actually, if you look up that book, it's a really good book. Everyone should check out if they're if you're into this podcast, you'll be really into this book. It's called Sellout, and it's basically about in the late '90s, early 2000s, mainly the early 2000s, when a lot of those like pop punk emo punk bands and shit like that got like the major labels tried to scoop them up so it's about bands like rise against jimmy eat world thursday green day oh, blink yeah. 182 yeah, yeah. shit like that and thursday they were a band that like they were they were on the cusp of getting huge their whole career like literally which in hindsight i love thursday but um whoever was into them he was he was on some other shit because he actually I think doomed them to fail because one of the like record execs was like they will be they will be the next Nirvana not in like and not just in sound in like how popular they were get and I was like yo I love Thursday I think they rule but anyone with ears can hear that they are not gonna blow up like Nirvana no that's that's great <laughs> you listen to Thursday right uh. Mm. Not really, not as much. You're, you're, I'm, I'm, I'm you're familiar. familiar. Yeah, Dom, Dom, Dom was a huge Thursday hit. So you're familiar with them. Yeah. 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 And you can hear, you're like, no, you're no. not going to have a fucking 2005 version of Nirvana with Thursday. That's crazy. Right. Yeah. But, that's not, they're not, they're not that expansive. You're, I could see that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Th but Thursday was a, Thursday was a band where, um, they actually, like, they were a huge influence on My Chemical Romance um and like they were they were a big influence on like a bunch of emo bands back in the day but they never like they never like popped popped like that they were always like big and respected and stuff mm -hmm. but they just like like their album wore all the time they almost got there and then they never really hit it I now guess, part oh, of that Rancid, has rancid what? was gonna be that way too rancid didn't really get get huge after and out come the wolves you know what i mean like they, yeah they, they continue to go like on and on but like they never they didn't aside from those music videos getting played on tv and shit like that and playing on big like like festivals and shit i don't think they really had a lot more notoriety aside from just again good charlotte they you see them wearing like rancid shit no effects yeah no effects would be a good uh thing that like they got super popular but they never got like notoriety necessarily yeah is no i think is that not a good example no i think no i think I no, I think that's a great example. Ranted and No Effects definitely were got bigger than Thursday did. Yeah, but also too, it did hurt that I. What you think so? Really? Um, long term. Long term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if Thursday, if Thursday, like if Ranted, No Effects, and Thursday each went on a headlining tour, Ranted and No Effects would have bigger venues than Thursday. Yeah. I could see that. That's more of what I'm saying. But also, it did hurt Thursday because the city by the light divided was not good. Like, that was supposed to be their big, like, their big follow up. Like, War All the Time was their major label debut. Mm -hmm. That hit number seven. I'm on their Wikipedia right now. And then City by the Light Divided was supposed to be their, like, big label follow up. And it just did not hit the same. So yeah. that had that had an element to do with it, but I don't know. It, it's a lot of things, but they just never 
they just never got that like mainstream success that other bands would have but to bring it back to the earlier point they're a band that if like say there was a new popular band and they for some reason started shitting on thursday even though thursday is not like fucking raking in the money big big like that still the vast majority of people was like whoa 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 you don't talk about thursday like that you don't fucking talk so to go back to your original point yeah i think more people would show up for census fail over suicidal tendencies yeah yeah and not just because of record sales baby Mm -hmm. so oh the so Yes, to what you were alluding to earlier, I wanted to run it back a little bit on our topic last week, which uh, shout out to everyone on Twitter. It was a very uh, people were people were talking about Pat. You got to get yourself a Twitter. People were talking. <laughs> yeah, there was Actually, a lot I, of a I had, it, I had it on Facebook. I had I saw some comments on uh, 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 YouTube as well on the video on YouTube. Uh, very guar positive. A lot of people, I think, maybe uh, assumed that I was going to shit all over the misfits. Uh, <laughs> But everybody was very pro, uh, at least from my experience, very pro pro guar. Not necessarily negative misfits, except for no. in a couple cases. But for the most part, we're we're just kind of like, yeah, I think Pat's right, one hundred percent, and Andy's full of shit and, and stupid, <laughs> no, and stupid, and he has a little penis, and he probably yeah. shits himself a lot. Oh, I should get on Twitter. I do want to see that. I mean, if there was more of that. Was yeah, there was that? there was there was a lot of there was a lot of chatter. A lot of people when you when you bring up a band like Guar, people start chitting and chatting a decent amount. Yeah. And so I just wanted to catch people up because I was uh, it it did I was real fucked up on that episode one because I was jacked up on way too much caffeine. Um, and it was funny actually after that episode, I dude, it literally this is how serious I take this book, guys. Guys, open your fucking ears. I want you to know how serious I take this stupid ass podcast. Uh-huh. My I thought I did a horrible job last week, and you can ask Steph. I was being such a mopey bitch. I was so. <laughs> All jokes aside, not like not like being like, <laughs> but I was just, dude. So many times, Steph was like, "You okay over there?" I was like, "I just, I just didn't do good on the pod. I just didn't, didn't do, do good." Great. I thought you did great. What's what? What do you? What happened? What, what, well, what? I just wasn't. I I just I just didn't feel like I was prepared. But it did. It was fucking me up that I was just like, I don't listen to any guar. <laughs> I don't listen to any guar. And I like, well, because here's this is the beauty of you. You'll you'll, and this this this, this topic's like haunting me. Um, because, <laughs> apparently, Jesus. Well, because on the surface, like this is the beauty of you. You'll like bring it up, and you'll just be like, you'll be like, yeah, you know what? Guar's better than the Misfits, and I'll just sit there and I'll be like, I didn't know comparing those was an option. <laughs> what the fuck's going on, Pat? Right, right. right. <laughs> and then and then you dig it deep into the conversation, like because you'll do things sometimes where you'll be like, is Pat a fucking idiot? And then <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, go on. And then you'll and then you'll break it down more, and then you'll be like am I a fucking idiot? <laughs> <laughs> and like, you had, you got me twisted, dude. You got my head all twisted. And I was like thinking about it more. And at first I, you know, at first I was like, yeah, there's like on the surface, there's similarities, there's similarities, but there's not that many similarities. And then I started listening to more guar and there's actually like the, like the, compa- the guar misfits comparison is actually like way more it's shocking, logical right? than I previously thought. Yeah. Um. But yo, know, so I got, I listened to some Guar. Um, it's hard. I, it's harder to narrow that down. They do have a. They have a, a more vast catalog. I feel like. Well, that. I'll say this. So I, 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 I big up Spotify. Their this is and then the band's name. Those playlists that they pre make. Yeah. I got into like the first four or five Guar songs on there. Was not feeling it, but then I found. I was like, let me find a playlist made by a fan. Yeah. Who like what's a fan? I would have like, thrown one together for you. I would, I, and I apologize about that. I should have been more prepared for that as well. And that's my. You job. absolutely dropped the ball, and I'll never think of you the same. Um, I'll kill myself, <laughs> please. Sorry, that was just my Christmas card this year. <laughs> you were just re, you're just remembering it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> hanging on by a thread. <laughs> the littlest thing will make it happen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um. So the fan made one was better. You think the fan made one? It was be- now. So here's the thing: I'm still misfits all day because I was listening to. And let me. I still. We might have to hit a part three, part four on this because, like I said, this whole topic is fucking me up way more than I thought. Because <laughs> I like, I, it. dude. I I only got I only got surface level into Danzig misfits this week. I got a lot to do. Yeah. I got a lot to do. But here's my thing. 
Here's my thing. I will go. I will go to bat for Danzig Misfits. I'm not even talking about Zan- Danzig as a guy. I'm just talking about music. Danzig Misfits fucking rule. And there was an interesting thing you said. You were harping on like the song 138, where you're like, "What the fuck does that even mean? What the yeah, fuck does that even mean?" And here's my retort to that: It doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> no, it does matter. That's what I'm no, saying. No, it does. Okay, my, my, so my are you? So you're comfortable with was... contradicting yourself? Put your hand down. <laughs> knock that shit off sorry i won't point my pen at you if you keep your hand down <laughs> you're right you're right it's only fair i'm listening patrick sorry i've been watching a lot of hogwarts legacy gameplay oh, videos yeah. Come on now. don't turn me into a frog now i don't want to be a chocolate <laughs> frog now no i i think my point in that case was me saying the the subject matter in which is being like where guar is if they're singing about uh uh horrific like science or science sci-fi shit horror shit anything whatever it's 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 a story that they're telling in which they also have uh visual aids and that like also it's going to be like reoccurring in other things okay like a story that they are kind of building up where misfits are referring to old shitty movies that you're like what the fuck are you talking about and then you go you research it and you look it up and instead of being like Oh, there's a fucking like DVD of like a sh- like a movie that they kind of do, and then there's like this world that they live in, and like they have comic books and other all this other shit. The fanciful shit that like the misfits kind of get credit for, and is kind of the stuff that gets fan made after the ca- the fact that they kind of get credit for, is kind of the stuff that I'm talking about that the Gu- Guar already does, and misfits is just kind of singing about this sci-fi movie from like 1952. That sucks. <laughs> then you go and you're like, well, what? Oh, what's the mo- What's it about? And you're like, it's just kind of like a body snatcher movie. Like, <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? Like, where you're like, really? The song is way cooler than the movie for sure. But like, when you dig, when you go deeper, you're like, what the fuck is? It? You like this shit? And it makes yeah. me feel like, no, the misfits are not cool at all. They suck and they're nerds, and they and they're <laughs> but they're overcompensating with their muscles and their water. <laughs> Guar doesn't drink water. They drink oh, milk. No, dude, they drink milk. Remember that story? <laughs> I guess I guess my main thing, because I thought I thought a really good point you made was like later misfits were kind of just like acting out. They were cosplay misfits. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which that's a super fair point. But like listening to I guess my thing was so they're both bands that dress up in silly outfits. Mm-hmm. And I thought musically misfits matched up to their silly outfits better than Guar. Guar sounded like a pretty good fucking like 80s rock band. And then they had some stuff occasionally that fat that felt like like hard drive and punk songs. But it felt like it's how I feel. You ever hear about you ever hear this dude um Oliver Tree? You you, you ever hear this guy? Mm-mm. Oliver Tree. Yeah, let me pull him up for you. Um, so he's a guy, and I'm not gonna play his music because they love taking this shit down. But here, quit your googling. I got it here, right here, buddy. But he dresses like a he dresses like a goofball, just an yeah. absolute goofball. <laughs> he's got balls on his chin. <laughs> yeah, he does. Let's get that out of here. Oh, um, <laughs> but like, and then Sorry. but then you listen to his, you listen to his like just. What the hell's going on? You like, listen to his shit. All right, there's a lot with balls on his chin. The balls one. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of looks like Joe Exotic in some of them, and he kind of looks like a weird, like Pee Wee character or some shit. Like, oh yeah, he definitely was on some. Yeah, on this one, right here, on this one, he was on some like Joe Exotic shit. Um, yeah. but like my my beef with Oliver Tree is that he goes he goes over the top like musically or goes over the top visually, but then when it comes to shit musically. It's like pretty good. I don't even know what the fuck to call it. This like um I it's like that shit uh Juice World does. I've heard the term emo trap music where it's just oh, like yeah. emo it's just like emo shit but it also sounds like SoundCloud hip hop and his music's like fine. Maybe I'm just old or whatever, but I kind of like Ghost. It's like Ghost. Ghost goes way over top with their look and then their music yeah. fucking sucks. <laughs> and I like- go and I go I go um I look at Oliver Tree and I just go, dude, without the fucking goofy shit, it's like you're me. It does a lot of, it does a lot of heavy lifting for the fucking song. And now I'm not, that's not to say like, oh, just the fucking Guar outfits does a lot of heavy lifting for music. I'm just saying like, I think, 
uh, from what I can, for, for my thing with Guar, it's like the outfits, the outfits are the exciting part. And then the, and then you're like, oh, and the songs are pretty good for me with the misfits. It's like the songs get me. And then I'm just like, yeah, they're just up as skulls. I don't fucking know. <laughs> oh, and the last, the last <laughs> one as skulls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. They're dressed up like skulls. Whatever. They're fucking Not even jack skeletons. Sk- They're dressed up like skulls. <laughs> They're, just, They're jack like skeletons. skeletons. Who the fuck cares? That's like that's the greatest fucking explanation of what they dress up as. They dress up like skulls. That's <laughs> oh, and the last part, and this might this is just like how I like music. I the misfit shit is just it's the type of intense that I like. It's just faster and stuff like that. And I, I lean towards more shit like that. Yeah. I can see that. So like the part of, part of Guar is a production. Like they're, they're, they're able to like, they're not necessarily a request band. They're not going to sit there and go like, what should we play next? Like, we got it. We know what we're playing next, but so is yeah. misfits, you know what I mean? But misfits feel like they're, they're like, it's not necessarily because of anything it's just because that's how they remembered it the, to me the this the misfits never and this is just my personal like this is how i it's maybe it's projecting i don't know but they always felt like guar were artists and and uh and misfits were jocks that took a music class as an elective because they had to you know what yeah. I mean? yeah they took jazz band and they learned that and they were like we're not gonna fucking play jazz fuck you and they're like <laughs> and they're like, like it, it doesn't feel it doesn't but obviously they did because they were the first you know what i mean they were first before yeah so so we were talking about this just earlier in the show misfits may have very well inspired guar to exist but i just feel like if somebody is going to pass on the baton not saying in this my 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 uh comparison before where i'll say that i love slayer i think they're great but I would never say like they're the greatest or my favorite metal band. They they have their place. I think Misfits mm-hmm. are, are good. But if it's either one of those two deserving that kind of who's put more work in, who's put more effort in, and I think who is ultimately better would be Guar still. But I do respect your opinion in saying like of of the energy of the Misfits, the the costuming not being as uh, important, more of just the music. Well. I, I'll say that I'll say let's let's end on this because I don't want to do yeah. I feel like we're going to start repeating ourselves and just do last week's episode all over again. But I'll say this from on the whole, like like if if what am I trying to say from like front to back? I think Guar as a, a Guar fan is a better overall experience. But with this week when I was listening to like some Danzig Misfit shit. Dude, I was like driving on my forklift. I was like, this shit fucking rules. <laughs> <laughs> so like, so like, I think Guar is a more front to back, better experience, but miss like Danzig misfits definitely has some absolute fucking bangers. Yeah. I, I honestly, I would like to hear that the, there was plenty of people standing up for the misfits in the comments as well, or at least to I say saw like, like one person, I think it was like all Guar, but they're not to say not, but to say like, nobody was saying necessarily, negative things about the misfits mainly about danzig being a dick and also just because well, it's hard to fully just like shit on the misfits yeah it's it, because you can't like like even i was trying to say like you can't just say that they're not they're not good or they're not influential or they're not important they're it's all all of those things but it's just ultimately if you're if you're doing a back-to-back or a side-by-side of those two bands in particular yeah i think i think one stands tall ultimately but hey you know pound off if you if you think otherwise yeah it's just With like new points that andy's brought up because andy I, I hope and also i hope this helps settle your your soul a little bit it did help a lot i was i had a lot of i had a lot of tension last week but yeah dude if you just go into that like static age release where they put a bunch of their like older shit together all in one thing just like static age rips tv casualty rips last correct yeah. rips hybrid right, but- moments rips hey let me let me do this. Let me let me posit you this. You you do me. What do you say? Like 10, 15 Stop right songs? there. Yes. 10 or 15 songs. You make a you make a, a Danzig uh, a Misfits playlist. I'll make a my Guar. What? 10 or 15 songs. How many do you think? Um, Yeah, 10 to 15. You you make that. I'll make mine. 
we can share them with each other and we'll share them with, uh, we'll have them in the, the comments of this as soon as we make it, uh, as soon as we get it together, we'll put it in the, the comment uh, of this show or the, the, what is it, the description. And you guys can check out those two and we'll compare just those two playlists. Mm-hmm. That's, that'll be the final argument because ultimately it's subjective. We know it's subjective. But yeah, well, do, let's do that songs against your 10 or 15 songs. And we'll say let's do that for... against those songs. We'll announce that on next week's episode because I'll okay. need to I'll need some time. OK, OK. Yeah, All I right. think that's fair. All right. Enough of doing last week's podcast. Uh, <laughs> let's let's move on. There's still we... some meat on that bone. Fuck them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There's still some spooky ass meat on that yeah. bone. Hell yeah, bro. All right. So I wanted to uh, hop into this because I had a little uh funny stuff happened on twitter nothing really crazy it just um a little running it, it like no no not even like a run in it was just it kind of like just made me laugh like uh i i was getting intrigued by like human behavior and shit like that where people i don't know certain things can like blind people from the argument you're actually making but i saw this tweet from craig reynolds which if you're not familiar he's the drummer for stray for stray from your was it stray from the path uh, they're a very good hardcore band. They're one of those bands now that they're kind of uh, incorporating. Like they're they're one of those bands where it's like they like they like they like really good hardcore music, and they clearly listen to uh, rap rock back in the day. And they're figuring out a happy medium of where to make this shit fucking rip. And also, they're super from a political standpoint. I like them a lot because they are almost. Um, they're often on the opposite side politically for me, but I their music's so good. It's like an anti-flag so, situation. Their music's really good, and I just, like, don't give a shit, and I can still... And that's, like, I always like to throw that out there for bands that are trying to get political, where it's like, just start with the music being really fucking good. Right. Because... I there's a, there'll be times where I'll hear them say shit politically and I'll personally start cringing, but the song's too fucking good. So I'm like, I'm just going to sit in here. So then for some people, they'll fucking sit in with that song. And then over time, the political the political message will get into them and they'll be like, eh, that's maybe more reasonable than I thought. So for political bands, I always say just start with the music and throw in the politics later. Yeah, I think so. I, yeah. yeah, I think ultimately let the let the music inspire the message. Like you're good, you feel the way you feel. You don't yeah. have to force a message. If you're forcing the message, if you're like, I need to write a song, but it's the same way we talk about comics at open mics. If you sit there and you think you need to write a joke about any kind of hot topics or anything like that, or, or yeah, button issues, then <clears throat> you, you're you're pretty stupid if you feel like you have to do that but if you one naturally comes to you let it just come to you yeah exactly that's a really good way to put it um so he tweeted he goes uh release 50 percent of your album as singles which increases monthly listeners which increases hype positive side effect more people know your deeper cuts negative side effect old people don't like it this way i'm into it which i think this guy's about my age may be older so it's always funny when they're trying to be like old people don't like it well you're about to be old so chill uh oh, that shit always it shit always makes me laugh when 30 year olds talk about that shit it's like but i i guess if your uh fan base is young as hell it it, it, it helps you out to talk like that but um oh Ooh, yeah so i I, I, <laughs> I saw yeah you know, all the old people anyway i'm the age nor people normally have children um <laughs> But no, and I I, I jumped too old in. to have children. <laughs> <laughs> I jumped in there. Uh, I was saying the way, and so this made me think of because there is. I've been noticing it with these the way that these bands like release their shit. I've I, I've noticed there's like a different way that some of these bands do this shit where they'll um they'll release a bunch of songs uh to like kind of get the 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 listens up on Spotify and traction and all this other shit, but then. A lot of albums will be like 10 fucking songs. So as a listener, it's kind of annoying when you already dropped four songs and then you're like, oh, I only get six more. So I jumped in there basically saying what Dance Gavin Dance did um, was the best way to do it. So I said the way Dance Gavin Dance did it with their last album was the best. Released a bunch of singles. They released like five singles, but the album still had like 15 songs. Which actually, I think the album had like 20 almost. Built great hype and still got a substantial amount of songs on release day, which I thought 
I thought that was like the best version of that. Um, yeah, yeah. It's exactly, how do you how do you feel about how bands are like releasing albums now? I th- think it's it, it's confusing because they use like different album artwork a lot of time. Whenever they do that, it makes me feel like they have what? No, I'm so glad you said that. No, because like bands will do this shit. Confuses. Um, me. Well, they'll do this shit where they'll release singles, but it'll be it'll always be the exact same album art. Also, and you're like I like single versions too. A lot of times, I like single out versions and album versions. If you're gonna release the song already and it's already it, like, give us a rough crop, a rough cut, or one that you think is, you know, you know what I mean. You want it to sound <clears throat> like good, but like uh, that's also a good way to figure out which tracks to release too. Like some that you might be like, oh, we have two different ideas of how this should be released. Release one as a single and one as an album cut. Yeah, like your, Green Day way, used to do. Green happy. Day used to what? I said that way everybody's happy. Yeah. Green Day used to do a really cool thing where um, a lot of times when they would release a single, because that was back in the day when bands would actually, because I feel like now when bands do singles, they're not really singles. They're just kind of like on Spotify, like here's another song from the album. You know what I mean? But like back when Green Day was putting out like Dookie and and, 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 uh, what was after Dookie? Insomniac. And then Nimrod and shit, they Morning. were they were actually putting out physical fucking like seven inches or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Um, and they would a lot of times put out the song on side A and then side B would be them doing a random song from an older album live. Like shit like that. Yeah, yeah. All, that was always fun. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, I think I think what Dance Gavin Dance is doing is fun. But then this this was just making me laugh. Cause I saw, cause you know, we've talked about it. We're the me, you, you and me, Pat, we're the top dance, having dance, Gavin dance detectives. They should do a law and order dance, Gavin dance, like starring us. Um, and you know, DG <laughs> law and order DGD. And so our audience is very familiar with the, with the goofing arounds of dance, Gavin dance. So you get a lot of heat in that department. And I see this nice young lady. She comments, DGD is irrelevant. We don't speak about them. Which is just, Factually I don't know. P- correct. <laughs> yeah, which which is first off, we do because I just did. Um, yeah. yeah, we both just did it. I just did, <laughs> and then so, I, but also too, it's this, it's this thing. I don't know. I don't know where it came from, but every like, everyone's morals are too closely associated to like every single thing that fucking happens. So, and let me, let me expand upon that. Cause I think the way I said it, people might be kind of like, huh, what are you talking about? Like, it's, it's this thing where she go, like you make a general point about from a business standpoint and this girl's sitting there going, but, but the lead singer's a bad guy. Yeah. So no. Yeah. And you're like, Okay, we can have the conversation that he's a bad guy, which there's a lot of info to back that up. But the business things yeah. still happened. Yeah. By the way, the band still, even when that guy left, the band still continued to to do the thing that they were doing. Like they still really, you know what I mean? Like they, it wasn't like that didn't change. It didn't make it irrelevant for the way that they actually like. You're talking about something completely different. And if that's the situation, if you're saying like. Oh, this is, you know, uh, there, this is irrelevant. We can't, we're not, we don't talk about this. Like, okay. That's like, that is, that has nothing to do with what we are talking about. <laughs> yeah. No. Cause you know what I'm saying? it's actually super relevant. Cause it yeah. backs up what the dude was saying earlier. Right. Because the business, it was such a, a successful business practice that the band was still able to succeed. Even after that person that made them irrelevant <laughs> left they still went on a tour <laughs> yeah and still got plays and were did interviews and all this you know what i mean like they still yeah. completely existed and still completely do right now like yeah you just go like i don't see it doesn't happen <laughs> like it's so <laughs> crazy I, that 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 culture that that idea is so uh alien to it me. just it just makes it it, it it makes it like it's what i hate the most about I know you are, but what am I culture? Well, it's what I, <laughs> it's what I hate the most about like modern discourse is it's just like, we can't like, we can't have a conversation. Cause like you don't, you, you choosing to not know what words mean. Well, no, and no, I literally, 
it's it's that's the thing and you, you it's a, it's weird that you word it that way because i think that's the thing is you say like we we like you can't have a conversation you can only have that one conversation though it has yes. to be that one convert you can have a conversation and it has to be about his uh, his uh accus- accusations and how uh that person feels about it like that's the one conversation you can have that's it uh-huh you're not allowed to have any other conversations of saying like well you know actually bill cosby was like brilliant at that stand up and like no 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 he was cosby's a, like, cosby's a great example too cuz like it's like bro i'm not even trying to say this to be funny like everyone's so fucking autistic now it's exhausting yeah, they're yeah. so fucking autistic cuz it's like I've done it before because okay, like I've I've been on podcasts where people will be like, how do you, how do you how or I've had conversations. Um, it happens more conversationally because like if someone's asking me to do their podcast, they probably like vibe with me more and they're not gonna act fucking like yeah. stupid when I because here's the thing. People will be like, I, I've been asked like what got you into comedy? And it's just like there's no way around it. It was Cosby. I yeah. when I was younger, when I was in elementary school, I heard a Cosby album and I go. That's fucking amazing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, and then I've, oh, I, by the way, you know why, Andy? Because it was like, because he, like, he was I know, so I know good at it. Cra- I know we're, we're, we're crazy bigots right now for saying this, but it's because it was really, really good. And you thought he was good. A, you, a lot of people agree with you too. Like, that's the thing is like at that time, everybody agrees with you, Andy, everybody, you know what I mean? Yeah. But nobody is allowed to like, just go like, yeah. That's that's a thing. Well, that's a fact. And the other thing is a fact as well. Like they're both that's, facts. That's the problem. That's the problem where everyone's acting like these fucking morality police where it's like it's like every conversation. Yeah. But what about be, because of that? But no, because of that shit, every conversation gets like fucking 10 minutes added on to it because. Right. Like with the Bill Cosby conversation, I've talked to people where. I've talked to people. I remember where I, they'd be like, they'd be asking stuff like that. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, you know, like Bill Cosby's. Um, I forget what the fucking one, but there was this like one album where he's like sitting in a go kart. Mm. Um, I'd be like, that's like one of the best fucking albums ever. And then you see him get like awkward and you're like, how is it not implied that the sexual assault was bad? Yeah. Like, why do we always have to have that pause right. where we go, by the way, I don't approve of what Cosby did to women. You're yeah. like, how is that not fucking understood? Right. It's, but yeah. also too, like, I, I can't go back and unlisten to Cosby himself. I can't go back and undo that, yeah, and I, I can't, can't go back and myself. not make that why I like comedy. Exactly. So it's like this, you know what I mean? So it's like when we're talking about dance, Gavin dance. Like, I even brought it up to the girl later, which I know, you know, going into these like Twitter fucking arguments. It's not yeah. like I, I mean, I have no expect, but sometimes you get wrapped up in them, and it's just like. I understand you don't like the lead singer's extracurricular activity. A lot of people don't. But at the same time, we can't go back in time and undo the fact that these they fucking got number eight on the Billboard chart. Right. That's just what happened during all of that, like the, in the midst of this. <laughs> so, like, what this guy, what this drummer is saying about how this music is being distributed is super fucking relevant because a band like dance Gavin dance who are not mainstream, right. they, they released their music like that. And then mid 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 their lead singer getting canceled. They still managed to hit number eight. So it's actually super fucking relevant. Right. That, that like yeah. we bring up dance Gavin my point. That's all. That's yeah. all she was doing was just saying like, Oh, you know what? Also remember that he was getting canceled at the time too. Like that's what she could have said is like, man. Yeah. And also, He's no, that's actually, relevant. you know what I mean? That's like, a really good fucking, no, that's a really good fucking point you bring up. Cause you're like, you're like now actually him getting canceled is a good thing to bring up because it's showing this business strategy is so good yeah. that you can get canceled in the middle <laughs> of it, dude. <laughs> you can get canceled in the middle of it and still hit number eight on billboard. Yeah. Being, being dance, Gavin dance. And I've never, I don't, I, again, I, I don't know. I don't know what this person, you may be also thinking the wrong way. Maybe this is one of those old people he was referring to that don't like it. <laughs> You could be you're thinking young, uh, liberal, uh, 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 woke person. This could be some old fogey in the music business going like, oh, I hate this. Yeah, they're irrelevant. Number eight. Never. You know what I mean? No, I think her her avatar is a drawing with blue and green hair and she's got a pride flag <laughs> in wow, her uh, in her name. Podcast. What? 
This is a Chinese bot for sure. <laughs> probably. I'm pro- like yeah, I'm probably just fighting with some fucking uh, uh, Chinese bot who's just yeah, like, we need we need to take this bu- Chinese balloon down, if you know what I mean, my friend. <laughs> we need to block this person on Twitter because obviously they don't share your ideals. Absolutely, dude. Um, Hey, great fucking episode this week. It was good. It was a lot. It was really good. I thought we did fantastic. I'm going to be spiraling this week because I'm going to be like, man, I wasn't nearly as good as Andy this week. Stop it. You were, you're I'm always the best. Be. You're always the best. You're the reason the people come here. You're the reason the people come here, and you're the reason the people come here. All right, we're going to get out of here. Thanks for listening to the pod. We're going to go record Ask Pat, which is our MMA show. You can hop over to the No More Heroes YouTube channel and go watch it there. We love you all. Be about it. Peace.